Cheers. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I you appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien yet again. This is, of course, the Tom O'Brien Show. This week is about to come to an end. It's a good thing. It's going to be a good weekend. We booked some decent profits this week, at least some of the stuff we were looking at uh, on this show. Let's take a look at what we have going on overall. The composite about 0.63%. Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.04%. Uh, the DXY coming down just a tad right now, trading at 103.49. Still in its uh, counter trend bounce. Crude oil coming down quite a bit as well. I think with the assassination of the Hamas leader, it, the, the U.S. is really pushing... Uh, for quite a uh, different shift in energy over there, essentially saying, listen, you got the guy who did the October 7th attack. Let's just go ahead and stop doing this and bring some peace to the Gaza Strip. Uh, strip. If so, you know, you don't run a risk of, of blowing up oil infrastructure. And you have the E-mini up about 0.31%. You have that gold contract up about 1.03%. Doing quite well today, making all-time highs. You have copper at... Up about 1.5% right now, trading at 439. Uh, the Russell coming down, and then silver roaring today. If Mike is listening in the den, let me get a meme, man. That's unbelievable movement to the upside for silver, up 6.45. Now I get why people were asking for good silver ETFs, <laughs> leverage silver ETFs earlier. And the Dow futures kind of sideways right now. Yeah, some of the 30 year rates coming down a little bit, you're 0.21% in the 30 years, which is nice to see. Uh, you have Apple up 1.25%. Celsius, just this is getting played on at these low levels right now, which is why you're getting such massive swings, uh, at least on the daily. Let's see, Disney up 0.63%. Wow, approaching 100. So again, they are increasing the prices of some of their fast passes. Uh, people who like Disney and, and visit the parks pretty often will absolutely spend some of that money. Uh, so you're trading up about 0.66% today, nearing 197.18. Nice to see some life coming back into that stock. Nokia is interesting. See, so this massive dip down on not terrific financials. Then you get some movement to the upside. So let's take a little look about that. Obviously, Dansky, uh, big uh, investment group, was like, hey, we're going to increase the buy rating. It's a little bit interesting because I, I don't see a lot going on in Nokia in general. They're getting a new CCO, so that's a comms chief. They're having a big leadership shakeup. They're cutting 2,000 jobs in China, 350 in Europe as part of the cost-cutting measures, adding AI to the Alta Plano access controllers. There's stuff going on in Nokia, um, but it just doesn't seem super attractive, you know, when you're looking at, I mean, I remember Nokia had a big run-up maybe a few years ago, and Reddit was hyping them, and it's because of uh, they, they were going to get into satellites. And it's like, I don't, I don't know what what this deal is, you know? Um, anyways, they didn't have fantastic kind of earnings. Of course, we went over that yesterday. At the end of the day, uh, kind of on the lower end of guidance, and uh, it's curious to see what this is, if that's just kind of really on the news of, of a buy rating at Danska. Let's take a look at what else. Steel Dynamics up. Okay. Wow. So definitely breaching that like upper trading range here at 130. It didn't really establish one that I had kind of anticipated, which again is usually within the $10 range, so like at 120 to 130. Kind of comes up some decent volume on that gap up. I'm going to be following this quite a bit. And then of course Basil as well. Um, he takes a look at Steel Dynamics sometimes too. 
uh, but we are making up to a yearly high. I believe this is also the all-time high, but I might be wrong on that. Let me see. No, it is the all-time high. So these are moving back towards that with some high volume. We'll see it throughout the week next week if you get some kind of sustained movement to the upside or at least some kind of consolidation uh, on, on low volume at this level, uh, which I think would be pretty good for Seal Dynamics. And then Tesla off about 0.25%. I was taking a look at Lithium, just the ETF lit. This is battery tech, which you know is at least nice to look at, but even just the kind of the general prices of the ore itself, because the, the main attractant to all this was lack actually. So you had Lithium AmeriCore, uh, the big news with them is that they are making a deal with GM worth about $625 million. I don't want to be on this five year. Um, for their Thacker mine. And supposedly Thacker mine has the largest reserves of, of lithium. They can last for about 41 years, making a million EVs a year. The company is valued about $502 million right now. And GM is giving them $625 million for a little bit above 30% of stake in Thacker. I just... Lithium is a weird one to me, right? Like, I could see the uranium, and I can call the uranium, and I, I think that makes sense. But there's just so much um, motion right now. I, I think it's way better if you're trying to get a stake in lithium. This is getting talked about a lot, too, on, online, right? You know, you look at some of the other lithium miners... Uh, get the names, the tickers for them. Yeah, like Albermail. So this one is also getting a lot of speech on it. What do you have? Yeah, not a lot of activity. And, and seriously, this has moved down like quite a bit. Some of the other lithium miners, you know, they you, you have an, what well, can be an issue or it cannot be an issue depending on how you want to look at it, right? Like if you want to get into lithium, you know, and having a pure lithium plate, you know, things like SQM, I think it's the largest lithium producer in the world. I've always been so cautious about like pure lithium plays just because you have the price of it kind of plummeting a little bit. Um, a lot of these large companies that people get into for lithium, it's not necessarily their main uh, kind of exposure. Um, I think at least for SMQ, it contributed only 11%. At least ALB is 13.6%. Additionally, there are no doubt going to be better ways to get lithium, extract it, and then purify it. Again, I've gone over this before on the show, but the major way that we do it now is something called brine extraction, right? Where you have the lithium in the ground, you pump the thing up through a slurry, you let the sun go and evaporate the liquid, and then you take that through a process, you know, get other, you know, kind of minerals out in it. Additionally, you know, this technology for solid state battery, which is 100% what EV batteries are going to be in the future, uh, is still nascent, right? And there's a pretty good chance that lithium doesn't stay dominant in solid state batteries. I mean, there are attempts now to create solid state batteries with things like magnesium that are happening at very high levels of academia. And of course, we know that, that can really seep in uh, you know, to the business world as well. You know, we're just at the beginning stages of this kind of stuff. And uh, so I, I wanted, I was really hyped to try to find some entry or some some reason I could come up with for lack to be something that I wanted to invest in. And I, I just, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. Looks like we're going to the break right now. We're going to be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien! Welcome back, everyone. Take a look right now at UEC. I know Basil talks about these guys quite a bit. You're having some nice movement up again today, up 2.34%. Uh, you know, I get cautious when you get a massive, you know, run up. It's always like, do I want to add more to my portfolio or what? Uh, but they did just get, let's go through this a little bit. Yeah, so they're authorized to increase production capacity. So they're one of the top four producers uh, of uranium. You know, obviously, Kamiko's up there. Next Gen is getting a massive run up with uh, Amazon's plan to build the SMRs. Um, you're getting a lot of pressure from the U.S. government to start building these SMRs now, especially at the Palisades reactor. Uh, so this stuff is actually coming to fruition now. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll see what manifests within the next year. Um, but I'm getting like frothy with this kind of stuff. It is pretty impressive. So let's take a look at this real quick. Um, yes, yeah, so the uranium miner got the green light from the State Department of Environmental Quality. That's in Wyoming. Um, uranium recovery program to boost capacity to 4 million pounds of uranium 308 annually. Annually, uh, the extraordinary growth in nuclear power in the U.S., creating a new demand paradigm for uranium supply from stable domestic sources. And so that's what I wanted to bring up as well, right? Because I believe one of the largest producers, you know, outside of Kazakhstan is BHP. That's being funky. Yeah, it's BHP, but they're producing it out in Australia, which I think runs into an issue. And what one of the trends that we are seeing manifest now, it, it began, and this is something to keep in mind too, when you're looking to invest in some stuff, um, probably more on the long term. But we're entering a phase right now where globalism will always be around and the, these trade routes will always be around. But I think what COVID showed all of us was that the supply chains uh, are very fragile, especially when they span multiple countries, right? We're also seeing a shakeup, in a sense, of kind of the standard hegemony, right? 
you know, if you look at any great emperor empire throughout time, you know, from the Romans to the Mongols, uh, even to the English, the, the point was to really control these trade routes in a major way. And in order for that to happen, you needed everyone who was involved on the trade routes to kind of agree upon things. Well, we've seen things, at least in the Middle East, kind of get shaken up. You're seeing China getting a tad bit more aggressive. Uh, obviously, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine um, definitely threw a wrench in this concept of, you know, like end of history type behavior, um, where, where things are in this stasis and we can, we can kind of run these secondary behaviors. Um, and, and so I believe there is a very large concerted push. You're, you're starting to see it right now, but I think we'll see it more throughout the rest of this decade of uh, domestic production of things and securing uh, the domestic production of, uh, you know, whether that's rare earth material in the sense of like uranium or lithium or whatever, um, all the way up to semiconductors, uh, things that are sensitive, that are going to be necessary in order to be operational in the rest of the century. Uh, I think it's going to be limited uh, to really domestic investment if, you know, at, at most uh, neighboring countries where there are very uh, strong interactions and, and, and healthy relationships with. So I think that's why BHP doesn't get so much of a uh, nice look at it. Of course, CCJ up pretty well today as well. We were talking about that company around its low uh, 35 when it touched back again, trading at 58.15. Um, I, I think I could probably foresee, and I'd have to do a little bit more like technical analysis on it and just kind of... I, I'm also going to wait for earnings as well to see if it shakes out people. I think CCJ has earnings coming up on the early part of next month. You know, if there's something that kind of spooks some of the investors, you know, it kind of sells it off. I, I think that would be a really fantastic entry point for it. And then, of course, UEC uh, doing quite well. Uh, let's see what it's next, right? Yeah, give me one second. NXE. Yeah, it's like even higher, 2.59. So without a doubt, these are plays that you've got to look into and do your due diligence for sure. Um, but when you're looking at them, again, think domestic, right? Who has the best ability to really ramp this up in a major way on a domestic level? Uh, who's already in there? Who's making deals now as it stands? Um, these are the guys uh, that kind of get, uh, are going to get going without a doubt. See if there's anything else for UEC. Yeah, so 4.1 million pounds of uranium 308 adds 175 million pounds of historic resources to the company's existing resource base. Yeah. It's so fascinating with this kind of movement forward. And it's been great because I know we've been talking about this, you know, for uh, honestly a few years now. It's bizarre how long I've been working here. Let's take a look too at this article. Uh, just to give you some more kind of like hype on all this kind of stuff. So the Biden administration is shelling out billions of dollars for clean energy and improving major offshore wind projects as officials race to secure major climate initiatives. And when you read this, I don't want you to think th that the two things are competitive because they're not. We need so much power, right? And so you get the wind project, you get solar. I think these will probably be somewhat dominant, which I don't really like, I don't believe that I think that solar and wind should be the most dominant because absolutely nuclear and uh, things like geothermal are far more efficient. But without a doubt, when you're getting this kind of money getting pushed into the approval of at least wind projects and really this clean energy, um, if not renewable energy, uh, this should hype you up for getting in, you know, looking into some of these kind of investment opportunities. And so this is nice. I think we're going to get a massive kind of like surge as well uh, from at least in employment from these kind of new spots. I was just reading something, I think it was on Bloomberg, but, you know, the guys who are working in, you know, more blue collar jobs, especially, you know, I say things like HVAC, there's gonna be plenty of blue collar jobs that are gonna be somewhat skilled uh, in this realm are, are the ones who are nailing it, you know? It's not necessarily the finance guys, right, anymore. It, it, is, it is totally the people who are on kind of the cutting edge of this kind of stuff. So the EPA made a 20 billion, uh, made 20 billion from a federal green bank available this summer for clean energy projects such as residential heat pumps. And I've I've spoken um, at 1.5 billion loan to restart the Palisades. Yeah, this doesn't go away either, regardless of who wins in November. 
uh, which I think is you know pretty fantastic. All right, let's move on a little bit. Talked about Intel, pumped up a bit today, up 0.87, yeah, not really that much, at least right now, up 0.87%. So they're rising on the report that it might sell a stake in Altera businesses. Uh, so they rose on Friday, lifted by the indications that it's looking to make a big outside investment in its Altera programmable chip making unit. Uh, is looking to sell a minority stake in Altera that values the business at about $17 billion. Uh, Intel purchased Altera in two, <laughs> 2015 for 16.7, geez. Launching it as a standalone company in February. Intel has been taking steps to try to shore up its finances, including exploring sales, some of its various divisions, although no one, except nothing has come to fruition. It's about 1%, and that's about it. And I'm really glad that the market, again, did not take the bait uh, on Intel in doing this kind of stuff because it doesn't, doesn't matter for them right now, to be quite honest. Uh, let's take a little bit of a look at Netflix. I actually did way better. I think the implied movement on both ends um, from Wall Street was about like 6.8. Well, you're seeing that we're doing 11.28 right now. So we'll talk a little bit about that uh, and their earnings when we get back. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv back 
everyone. Jacob Shoot filling in for Tom O'Brien. Got one full segment left. Take a look at Netflix right now. Trading up 11.3%, uh, which is pretty fantastic. You could see some people did not have some hope uh, really at the end of the day there uh, for this company. Let's take a look at what happened with it. Yes, yeah, so they had 5.1 million subscribers added during July, September. That represented a 42% decline from the total gained during the same time last year. Uh, even so, the company's revenues and profits rose at a faster pace than had been projected. Uh, Netflix ended September with 282.7 million worldwide subscribers. Uh, and that just that just blows everything else out of the water, any other streaming service. Uh, they earned 2.36 billion or five bucks and 40 cents a share as a 41 uh, percent increase from the same time last year, which is pretty nuts. The revenue climbed 15 percent from a year ago to nine Point eight two billion. They predicted the company's revenue will rise this internally, uh, will rise at the same fifteen percent year over year pace during the October December period, slightly better than analysts had been expecting as well. The strong financial performance in the past quarter, coupled with the upbeat forecast, eclipsed any worries that slowing subscriber growth uh, essentially may cut into profitability. Uh, of course, they really did crack down on um, account sharing in a major way. Uh, Netflix stock price surged nearly 4% in extended trading after the numbers came out, building upon a more than 40% increase in the company's shares so far. This is a quote from the Netflix co-CEO. We had planned to reaccelerate growth and we delivered on that. Uh, you, you, did you? I mean, at least revenue-wise, yeah. But the strong financial, yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> anyway, sorry, that kind of like threw me off for a moment. Um... Yeah, I mean, this is kind of to be expected too, right? I mean, you had so many people stuck indoors during the pandemic and anyone who believes that you're just going to constantly keep acquiring, 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 you know, through kingdom come, I mean, things aren't linear, right? But one of the things that I think Netflix did uh, very adeptly is understand that they're going to get a contraction and growth, just a contra contraction in numbers and figure out more ways uh, to kind of eke out uh, money from the uh, current people, you know, really, really a really strong core, I would say. And then I believe they're adding like tiers of ads at some point as well. I don't watch Netflix at all. Um, so I kind of get in the dark on that. Um, but uh, needless to say, people are loving it, especially up 11.3% uh, as it stands now. And really, again, destroying all the other streaming services in a major way. Uh, let's take a look at Procter & Gamble real quick. Of course, some more woes uh, coming from China. You know, China, actually, before we do that, I just want to see what Baba is at right now. So basically growth in China did decelerate quite a bit. I think they're only growing about 4.3%, uh, but that is uh, technically a deflationary movement um, when you consider what they've been trying to aim for. Uh, so the Chinese government did acknowledge that, and it seems like they are going to try to prop up the economy quite a bit. I was kind of expecting that you would see maybe more of a movement in things like Baba. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, so the central bank has moved to support markets. As data show, the economy is expanding, uh, the least in six quarters. So uh, the PBC disclosed more details of its measure to boost capital markets. Let's take a look. Yeah, so okay, 4.6% for July to September. And then the retail consumption is picking up a little bit mainly the appliance and goods trades for the stimulus measures, which is pretty solid. Um, so if they come in and, you know, give some good money, I don't know if they cut rates or kind of, they have a lot of different ways of actually kind of dealing with this kind of stuff, more so than what our Fed can do. Um, I think we'll see uh, kind of a nice uptick in things like BABA, trading up 2.15%, uh, especially after falling uh, quite a bit. Uh, but then we can go back real quick to Procter & Gamble. Oops. Yeah, so off about 0.75%. Uh, they reported a surprise drop in quarterly sales for the second time in a row. Uh, consumers are basically price conscious, at least is what they're kind of saying, uh, especially in U.S. and China. They switched to cheaper brands of health and family care products. Uh, economic uncertainty in the U.S., which accounts for nearly half of P&G's total sales, pushed customers mainly uh, from the lower income group to discount offering rivals in cheaper private label brands. 
Uh, meanwhile, growth in PG's first quarter organic sales in North America slowed to 4% from 7% a year earlier. So they said consumers aren't feeling good out there um, about uh, regarding this bout of inflation we've had over the recent years. So we need to see an improvement in sentiment uh, for a company like this to do better. Uh, Nestle on Thursday noted a weak demand environment would continue flagging pressure from weaker economies such as Latin America. And then they got kind of hit in China just basically with the prosperity issues they're having over there. There is a vast amount of youth unemployment in China as well, uh, which, oh geez, um, which, uh, you know, can run into some serious problems. Looking to rejuvenate parts of Olay business. You know, I it, it's bizarre, right? Because I've been reading things as well that people are, you have your luxury brands kind of declining, right? So you get people at kind of like higher levels, you know, essentially not uh, splurging that kind of way. I think they kind of get more, uh, you know, we're going to move our stuff into money markets and stuff like that. Um, they still buy the essentials. The people on the lower end of the income spectrum, they are still buying things at very high rates. So you're still getting an uptick in strong consumption. And what I think is kind of happening here is what the average American consumer considers as necessary uh, for, for living, um, you know, has shifted quite a bit, right? I mean, you're still getting a bunch of people paying, you know, 20 bucks a month or whatever for Netflix. You still get, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of interesting to see, but it, it's interesting to see as well where they start uh, cutting some of this spending uh, additionally. And then we can talk a little bit about United Airlines as well. One second to get this up. It's trading up 1.09%. said on Tuesday that it's starting a 1.5 billion share buyback as the carrier reported higher than expected earnings for the busy summer. United Airlines shares rose 13% Wednesday, leading the S&P 500 higher in closing at 72.02, the highest since February 2020. United said domestic unit revenue turned higher in August and September compared to the last year as airlines trimmed a glut of flights that were pushing down fares. Uh, we believe Q1 yield strength will be possible due to significant schedule changes and business model changes that will continue to be implemented by low margin airlines. So they expect to earn an adjusted 2.5, excuse me, $2.50 to $3 a share in the first quarter compared to the $2 a share a year earlier in $2.68. They expanded capacity by 4.1% in the third quarter. And the carrier said that corporate revenue rose 13% in the quarter. Premium revenue, including business class tickets, rose 5%, and sales from its no-frills basic economy tickets were up 20%. So people are still spending on this too. Kind of strange. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a short segment. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is just going to be a short segment here. Uh, take a look at uh, Google right now, Alphabet up 0.25%. The reason why I'm bringing them up is because I think on the long term, they're going to have a really, they're going to have much stronger ad revenue. Okay, so if you're kind of like me or whatever, I guess if Google, you're listening, I don't do this, but you know, people use ad blockers, right? Um, it can be very annoying when you're trying to watch something, even like when I fall asleep with some something on, um, you know, to get an ad put in there. And so you knew people use ad blockers for this, and this obviously cuts into Google's uh, ad revenue uh, to some certain extent, they have a new strategy that they are doing. And this is something called a server side, they're calling it insertion, but kind of a server side injection in a way, which is kind of strange. So usually what happens is you're getting a video that's coming out and it's gonna be you know one big block of information and they will, you know, essentially throughout it kind of break that up and put the, the ads as a different kind of unit um, for you to receive. What they're attempting to do now is really inject it. So uh, basically the, the ad blockers can kind of read that and tell that that's not the video and they will block it out, skip it, whatever, right? And so what YouTube is working on now is server side ad insertion. Uh, so what is being sent out is essentially this kind of homogenized, at, at least to any program reading it, is kind of homogenized block of data, and so it's nearly impossible uh, for ad blockers, at least as they stand now, uh, in order to do anything about that, which is really kind of fascinating. And I'm not sure what the remedy for that will be, because uh, these ad blockers will still be around, and uh, obviously everything within cyber is a cat and mouse game consistently. I wonder if AI, to some certain extent, might help with that in a sense that it could might be able to uh, watch the video uh, far quicker than humans are able to and kind of determine what is an ad um, and what isn't. So. All right, let's see here. It looks like we might be coming close to an ad, uh, or at least the end of the show, but I'm gonna keep uh, going here until I hear that music. And there it is, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll be back 